John in Overland Park, Kansas writes, I am one of those older geezers. <laughs> Join the crowd uh, who tends to remember old information, but missing on the updates, which leads to my questions. I know electronics used to require a burn-in before they reached peak performance, at least on high-end gear. Has that changed any in the last 40 years? And how long should burn-in take before reaching optimal performance? Is it the same, is it true for digital equipment? And also, do speakers, especially newer speakers, require burn-in? And if so, how long should it take? And finally, any suggestions on how to accomplish the burn-in of either of the above? Thanks for all you do to keep the stereo interesting and alive. P.S. I really enjoyed your Emian books tremendously. Why, thank you. That was fun writing the, the Emian series. For those of you that don't know, I wrote an adventure series, kind of a thriller adventure series, kind of cool, called Emians. And if you just go to Amazon, you type in Emians, E-E-M-I-A-N-S. You'll, you'll find the, the book. There's four books. It's really a trilogy. And then if you want to read the fourth book, it's fine. But OK. Yes, burn-in is a thing. Yes, burn-in works on digital. Not quite as much, in my opinion, as analog, but depends on what kind of digital we're talking about. So a DAC, a digital to analog converter, has both digital and analog, and it does benefit from burn-in more than, say, a transport. A transport, which is a pure digital device, honestly, I've never really heard much of a difference in sound quality from burn-in, but something like a DAC certainly has a burn-in period. Speakers, oh my gosh, yes. Now, speakers are kind of easy to understand. Speakers have physically moving parts, membranes in tweeters that move back and forth. We, we can see, for instance, on our Aspen series of loudspeakers, our tweeter is a planar tweeter, and that planar tweeter is a, a piece of plastic, mylar, I forget, capton, whatever it is. It, it's something called peak, which I don't remember what that is. Chris would know, but it, it's a super, super thin material that has almost no mass, and we can see as you use it over a period of, say, I don't know, a day or two, you can see the response changing. And when Chris designs these speakers, he burns in the tweeters and the woofers before he even designs the crossovers so that once the speakers burn in, you have exactly what you want. When we start and you start playing them, they're not going to respond, even on a measurement scale, the same. And that's because, again, stretching out the surrounds, the membranes, all that kind of good stuff. And then on electronics, we have capacitors. Capacitors in particular need to form. And this is a process where under use, their dielectrics fill in all these holes and they form. You know, everybody's using chat GPT today. So just go to chat GPT. And have you seen this? ChatGPT now has a wicked cool interface for voice. I don't know if you've tried this yet, but you can go <clears throat> on to ChatGPT. It's free unless you really want to get going and click the voice mode. You're going to have a conversation with this machine and just, hey, um, this guy on YouTube said that capacitors form and they change their characteristics when they do this forming thing. Explain to me what that means. And you can and say, okay, I got it, but it doesn't really make sense. You know, try it harder. I mean, this is amazing. I use ChatGPT a lot, especially for searching on the internet. I don't even use Google anymore. I just go, hey, tell me, you know, where this is. And I get a URL, boom, done. It's, it's pretty slick. Um, how do we get off on ChatGPT? Oh, talk about capacitors forming. Yeah, ask it any kind of question, it'll tell you. But yes, burn-in is a thing. All right, and the best way to do it, that's right, 
Last question. Uh, I think the best way to do it is if you can play a test disc. So at Octave Records, one of the first ones we put out had a nice set of test tones that warble and do all this kind of good stuff that'll exercise the drivers and the capacitors. I would buy that. It's one of our very first ones in the reference in the audio files guide reference series. Buy that, put it on repeat, leave it, you know, during the day when you don't have to close the door and just let it play. It doesn't have to play super loud, just loud enough to make enough noise. And that's what I would recommend. All right. Thanks. Take it easy.